Good morning, everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. If you want to activate your mic and say hello. Good morning. Uh, today, guys, what I'd like to do, we're going to continue with looking at our educational philosophy and looking at um, our, our e-portfolios. Just as a reminder, I'm in Microsoft Teams. If you guys go to Files, ePortfolio, make sure if you haven't done so already that you've included the link to your ePortfolio and your LinkedIn profile. This is the link I'm going to use to uh, review your ePortfolio. Okay, so if you don't have it here, then I won't know where to check. So please check and make sure that you have included the link here in the Excel spreadsheet along with your LinkedIn profile. Today, what I'd like to do is what we did yesterday. I want to give you all day today to continue working on your educational philosophy, continue developing your e-portfolio. If you want me to look at uh, some aspect of your e-portfolio, even if it's perhaps not completed, uh, now's a good time to do that. And so uh, let me know. And I'm looking at some of the educational philosophies here. I've left some comments. Make sure that you remove the comments as you've made the changes. Those of you who have already left comments, if you want me to look at it again, let me know. And today I left a few more comments. I'm still looking at a few more here uh, this morning. So I'll continue looking at that today here and during our live session. If there are any questions, of course, as always, jump in, ask your questions, and uh, so that we can take advantage of these live sessions to uh, to continue working on these two products. Okay, any questions about the educational philosophy or the e-portfolio? Yes, me, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Uh, do we have to upload in the uh, e-portfolio our works that we have been uh, working during this semester? Yes, we need to include both of our essays. Okay, so the essay from Unit 1, the essay from Unit 2. We need to include all the products that we included for Unit 2. We did the purpose statement, the recommendation letter, the formal email, and probably the uh, the cover letter, like a cover letter that would accompany your online resume. We also need to include a link to your online resume. Okay, so so that there should be a a, a link within your e-portfolio, maybe of a kind of an icon, some sort of image that that uh, is representative of either LinkedIn or or the resume of some kind, but maybe a, a nice visual image where you can click and that will take the user to your your LinkedIn profile. And the four poems. Okay, so we want to include the limerick, the sin cane, the tanka, and the sonnet. And as I mentioned yesterday, we saw some examples of some good uh, imagery in in each of the poems. If you want to recite the poem, record yourself using your cell phone, for example, uploading an audio to your, your poems, I think that would be also a good addition. It's not required, but uh, at least include an image and the poem itself, the text. And I would also include separate pages for each of these products that I just mentioned. Okay, so essentially everything that we've included uh, this, sem this semester, the products that we've worked on in each of the four units, we want to include those into our e-portfolio for, for a grade. Now, as we've talked about before, if you guys have other works that you've done in other classes, whether prior semesters or maybe even current sem this current semester, then you can also, of course, you're encouraged to include that as well, but it's not part of the grade. All right, teacher, I got it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Any other questions about the e-portfolio or the educational philosophy? Teacher, for example, 
I have a question. Yes. Uh, for example, if I have my educational philosophy in the first page of my e-portfolio, should I leave it like this or put it in my resume or like in the page that says about me? Um, it's yesterday we talked about two different options. Uh, you can you can put it in your home page or you can put it in in a in a page that's called about me. Personally, I like a page dedicated to to you guys, to the to the author of the the, the e portfolio. So having an about me page, I think, is a good place to include an educational philosophy if you're going to include an about me page. If you don't want to include an about me page, then perhaps either in the main page or even a separate page. I mean, it's really up to you. It's just a matter of what you think looks most professional. How do you want to design it? I don't want to tell everybody to do exactly the same thing. I want you to have a little bit of flexibility in, in uh, you know, how you present the works. Okay, so a lot of times I'm just going to give some suggestions about different ways of doing it but i think you can decide you know what you which is best and how it looks best depending on how you've designed the e-portfolio okay thank okay. you okay you're welcome and sometimes uh, the questions like if we look at your e-portfolio i might make different suggestions based on what i see right so uh, but generally speaking you guys have some flexibility in how you want to organize these but i i just want it to be uh i want all of the information to be very easy to find okay we don't want to be like okay where's the education philosophy i can't find it or i can't find the you know the um you know your first essay i don't know where it is where do i click so it should be really obvious for someone visiting your e-portfolio for the first time to be able to find what it is they're looking for and uh, that's why, especially if you're including information from other classes and other types of, uh, of content, right? Not just writing content, but maybe, let's say, a teaching practicum, teaching methodology, maybe even something related to applied linguistics. You might have to organize slightly differently the, the navigational menu at the top of your screen so that someone can find information for example related to applied linguistics okay so it's going to depend again on how much information what kind of information that you're including in your e-portfolio but i would try to think uh in advance thinking of your future and how you might also want to contribute to this e-portfolio going forward so next year next semester whatever um how how would you organize your e-portfolio so that you can continue to contribute and add content to it as you develop this content in your courses throughout the BA. So try to think about uh, that as well uh, when you're developing. And of course, you can always change the design. If you, you change your mind next year, whatever, you can change it. But it's good, I think, to kind of think, think in, in the future in terms of how you might want to contribute to your e-portfolio so that you're planning for that now when you're designing and you're thinking about menus and sub pages and that type of thing. One other thing I want to say about the e or the uh, educational philosophy, remember that this is, keep it really personal. This is about your philosophy on teaching and learning. It's about you and your approach. Think about those 10 questions that we looked at in prior sessions and I would avoid trying to speak too much about, well, I think teachers ought to do this and teachers should do that. It's all about you. It's about your approach, your philosophy, your outlook, your, your beliefs without saying, I believe, I believe, I believe. You can include your goals, but don't, I don't think you need to say, my goals are. You can just articulate your goals through your your uh, through your explanation through your your text but without saying my goals are just try to incorporate your goals in your discussion and uh, keep it personal keep it professional and personal 
and specific. In some cases, we could be a little bit more specific in terms of what we're explaining in terms of teaching and learning. But I think the easiest guide is to take some of those 10 questions we looked at and answer those first. Just write out the answers. How would you answer specifically some of these questions? And then bring it into a coherent and cohesive idea in, in the form of one paragraph. Remember, we need to have a paragraph between five to eight sentences. All right, so also can consider that as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. Uh, Kato, I'm still looking at your, uh, your paragraph, so I'm going to leave. I'll, I'll take, take a look and leave a few comments. If anybody else has questions or wants me to look at something, again, feel free to jump right in. Oh, uh, you haven't finished mine? No, Kato, I started, but I didn't quite finish. So if you don't mind giving oh, me just a minute. It's and, because uh, I'm just a little bit confused because I'm looking at it and I just saw a lot of comments. So I thought those comments were mine. Uh, no, the comments that are, I mean, I usually highlight text. So yeah, but I don't know, somehow it appears like those comments are mine. That's weird. Yeah, Does no. it look... Does it look like, can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Okay, so maybe it looks different uh, from what I see, but like for me, I just have left one comment so far on, on yours. Like if I click on these comments, it highlights what I'm referring to. So I don't know if that's the same when you, when yeah, you are. Yeah, I know. It appears the same. It looks the same, but I just... Click on the comment and it gives me like a lot of comments. <laughs> so, huh, I... that's weird. Well, yes. I, if you, if it helps to look here, I mean, I can, we can just, I'll talk to you about it and you can look and see what I'm referring to if you, if that helps. Um, so, here I, I would uh, keep. Keep the, keep the word language and teaching in lowercase and also educational and philosophy in lowercase. up here And um, Kato, in your case, this first sentence, I would jump right in and keep it as personal as, as possible. So, uh, so here, in, instead of saying a teacher has to be responsible and, and all this, just keep it about, about you, thinking about why you teach, how you teach, whom you teach, when do you teach, where do you teach, and especially with technology, if, you're, if you want to incorporate within your educational philosophy something about technology, where and when you teach are really interesting questions to answer, all right, because with technology, we can start, we can really teach in a lot of different places or from a lot of different places or spaces and you know when it can be uh, almost any time depending on the situation i'm committed to... um all right So when you're thinking about helping students achieve the, the objectives of the class, okay, I mean certainly there this is something uh, you know that we should do, and it's that's a a good characteristic to have, right? That you're wanting to help them achieve their objectives. But here's the thing with your philosophy: what makes you different from someone else? Okay, imagine that you're trying to apply for a job. 
and they're asking you, you know, and if you say, well, I'm committed to uh, that students achieve the main objectives of the course, right? The director, whomever is responsible for hiring you, they may say, well, uh, yeah, that's, that's good, but we expect that from all teachers. You know what I mean? They would be like, well, that's, that's part of the job. And so what you want to do is you want to set yourself apart from everyone else. And you want to express even more in detail. When you think about the objectives of the class, what objectives do you want your students to achieve? And how are you going to facilitate that process? And if you can bring that into your educational philosophy, I think you, uh, you can improve in that you, again, are being more specific. We know more about who you are as a professional, both from a teaching standpoint and from a learning standpoint. All right. So that's, uh, this is kind of what I mean here in highlighting this first part. I am committed to making students achieve the main objectives in, of the class. In order to, so here, I encourage you, Caro, to dig deeper into the specifics. You want to be a facilitator to provide students necessary tools. And of course, facilitator is a good term to use, okay? But we don't want to lose sight of what it means to be a facilitator, okay? So if you're going to use this word facilitator, I would follow up with something slightly more concrete. The necessary tools, well, what are the tools? And how are those tools going to be used? And how are you going to bring those tools into the learning experience for the betterment of your students? Right. So again, it's just trying to dig a little bit deeper into some of the specifics of some of these ideas that you have. Right. And try to be a little bit more explicit and concrete. All right, so here's another good, you have some really good ideas here that you have adapting uh, material, let's see, it, you want to use, you want, I am, I aim to design meaningful materials that adapt to the lesson plans, okay? Maybe think about how, what kind of, how would you adapt a material for a particular learning outcome? Think of it like that. Because the lesson plans are designed to produce outcomes, learning outcomes. So if you can express or articulate the learning outcomes, how does the materials, and even like, are you referring to technologies? Are you referring to games? Are you referring to um, some sort of uh, materials that produce or encourage interaction between students. So try to link again, instead of maybe lesson plans, try to link the adaptation of materials to learning outcomes. I'm just gonna put here, think about learning outcomes as opposed to lesson plans. All right. So again, positive outcome. How how would you include? How would you create a positive environment? A positive environment. All right. So so they can adapt and succeed. Okay. Moreover, I motivate students 
to increase their awareness when learning English. All right, their awareness of mm -hmm. all right. All right, this sentence here, I think I would I would not include. Uh, your philosophy is not about what you've done. It's your thoughts and your perspectives, your beliefs, and your attitudes about teaching and learning. Now, what I would like for you to do is take your experience from teaching experience, take that experience that you've had from practicum classes, and think about how you like to work, how you like to teach, how you think teaching should be done. And again, I, it, I think just in overall in your paragraph, if you can just dig deeper into some of the specifics about, about motivation, about uh, facilitating the process, right? And, and think more in terms of learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are those behaviors that you can observe from the students and you're t you're talking about language education so there's a lot of different ways that you can express learning outcomes speaking and writing and listening reading grammar pronunciation you can bring in some of those examples working uh, together working in whole groups small groups pairs individually autonomous learning Right. You could even use scaffolding if you want to think about teaching and linking prior knowledge to what they're what they're doing. You mentioned their needs and what they like to do. So you could also bring out some examples about about that as well. Right. So a lot of good ideas here. I think I would just try to dig deeper into some of uh, the specifics. I think that will uh, improve your educational philosophy. So here I'm just going to suggest that uh, I suggest here I would Now you might include this in your online resume in your LinkedIn profile if you want to include that you've done some teaching experience um, you know that that maybe that might be better served in your LinkedIn profile. The second yeah, so these characteristics are really good characteristics. If you can show instead of tell, think of it like you're showing. You're showing someone how you're a patient teacher. You're showing others how through examples, how you're tolerant, how you're a cheerleader for their success, how you're practical. Show them. And I, all of the text that you have here, show these things. Show them how you're responsible. Okay. Now, responsible is one of those things where uh, I'm not sure I would include in the educational philosophy only because there are certain expectations that others are going to have that you will that you should have right some characteristics that you should have and for me the educational philosophy kind of goes above and beyond what others would expect like think of what sets you apart what makes you different from another teacher what qualities do you have with some examples when you're answering those questions that really uh, make you uh, different, right, than, than someone else. All right. Okay, thanks, teacher. You're welcome. Demaris, I see you've uploaded your paragraph. I'll wait, and uh, if you want to hear from you until you're ready for me to look at it, just let me know. Teacher, can you check mine? Okay. Teacher, can you check mine? Thank you. Uh-huh. 
I'll check Elizabeth and then Alice here. Okay, thank you. I also have another question. Okay. Can we use the one we made um, in the second unit for the LinkedIn profile? Yeah, I mean, if you want to base it, if you want to begin with that and we can look at it and, and make comments to it, yes. And, and I would update whatever you end up in your final draft this week. I would include that also in your LinkedIn profile as well. It's basically, it's the same thing. It's just revisiting and, and uh, looking at it a little bit closer. And writing it in first person? Yes, it should be in the first person. Mm Okay, uh, Elizabeth, here, the, this sentence here, all students will achieve their goal of learning another language with the teacher as a guide. Mm. That encourages them to be independent and to make mistakes and start again, to express their feelings and opinions of their own experience. All right, so I like the rest of the sentence. This first part, uh, I wonder if there's a way you can... kind of set up the idea, set up the rest of the idea that encourages them, like, uh, like if, if you say something like, I encourage my students to be independent, to make mistakes, to express their feelings, or, or maybe talk about how you guide, how you would guide them instead of making a really strong statement like students will achieve their goal, like without a doubt, every single student will achieve their goal if the teacher is a guide. I don't, I don't know, I wouldn't write it quite like this, only because as a teacher, we assume a lot of different roles. And of course, being a guide is a very important role, but that's not the only role that we play. You know, as, a te as you know, as we all know, sometimes we are a guide, sometimes we facilitate, but also sometimes we are a didactic leader. That is, we have to present something that they don't know and we have to assume a different role that it's not, we're not a, a guide. And our job as a teacher is to learn how to move through these different roles, okay? Because we never assume just one role. And I feel maybe I would set up, the, just try to reword this first part that leads into, encourages them to be independent and make mistakes and express their feelings and opinions, right? Because I, I like the, where you're going with it. Um, I think though I would, anytime you say something like they will achieve their goal, it's like real, it's an absolute. And, and I'm not saying you can never use absolutes in this particular type of text, because you're using like every student and that's fine. But yeah, I would reword this first part, I think. Okay. Mm, as a teacher, I will show. And I, I something about using the, the future tense, I would, I would use the present tense because the future tense insinuates that you're not doing it now, kind of, even though I know that's not what you mean, but I think it would have a stronger, more of assertive and uh, yeah, a better effect if you keep it in the present tense, because now you're saying this is a characteristic that I have currently. It's not something I'm going to do in the future. It's something I do right now. This is what I believe right now. This is what I do right now, right? And if you keep it in the present tense, for me, that's what you're saying. As a teacher, I show 
dependability, right? I, I'm committed, I'm honest, and that, that type of thing. Instead of say, I will show, you know what I mean? Commit, honesty, respect, motivation. Mm hmm Okay, yeah, so, yeah, it's coming together nicely, Elizabeth. Just if, that's what I would say here on what you have here so far. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Ali, right? Ali. Yes, teacher. All right. Have you made changes here to my comments, or do you have any questions about the ones, the co the comments that are still here? I only have questions in the third uh, comment because I didn't understand quietly. Uh, let's see. Is this one here in the acquisition of new language? Yes. Uh, let's see. All right. You're mentioning here the adaptive pr prior knowledge, previous knowledge based on the experiences that have acquired over time. Okay. Mm, my point here is that it sounds like you're saying that you want to link and scaffold, basically, link prior experiences to current experiences, but only prior experiences learning the new language. But I guess my question is, do you want to only talk about linking prior knowledge that relates to learning the new language? Or do you want to say that it links any type of prior knowledge of anything that they have experienced into the learning of a new language? Because I feel it sounds like the experiences are acquired over time. I When I read this, I I felt like you meant that you're only scaffolding prior information that relates to learning a new language, but maybe it you want to expand and think of linking it to basically any prior knowledge that they that they have, right? I'm thinking like uh, if you're teaching for uh, English for specific purposes, right? Maybe you're linking some prior work experience that really has nothing to do with learning a new language, but you're bringing that into the language learning process. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And so I think I would reword it slightly to clarify what it is you want to say there. Um, yeah. All right. Sure. OK. Yes. Anything else we need to look at? Mm, I don't know. Maybe you can check more deeper because Yesterday, I uh, just only had uh, five, no, three sentences. So okay. I also changed that. Yes. All right. My education Here, I think I would avoid saying one of my goals. Um, just think of your goals and express and show your goals. So you could say, furthermore, when teaching the language, see, and mm -hmm. yeah, um, okay. when teaching the language, so when te let's see. Yeah, you would have to change slightly the grammar here, but you could say, when teaching the language, uh, or teaching the language is to provide several tools. Tools for me is one of those words, uh, even like facilitator. Uh, be careful with the word, and uh, because it it sounds good, 
but what does it mean necessarily for you, right? And this is, again, an, an opportunity for you to distinguish yourself from someone else if you can go into greater detail about what you mean, like which tools and how would you use those tools? When would you use those tools? But specifically, what tools are you referring to? Are they mm -hmm. materials? Are they games? Are they interactional patterns? Are they technologies? And so maybe expand. I'm not going to get in that. my participation. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. I notice here that you, in this sentence you say, the purpose of the teaching is to encourage students to use their thinking and reasoning skills. So for me, thinking and reasoning skills relates to cognitive thinking that you have here. And so I feel like this sentence in between, furthermore, one of my goals is teaching learning in order and tools to engage them to work by themselves. And then you jump back to cognitive thinking. So maybe this idea of cognitive thinking needs to be closer to where you mention thinking. I'm assuming cognitive thinking or reasoning skills. Because this next sentence deals more with the social. So I would just think again how you want, what, what's the order? What's the best order of each of your sentences? And in this case, between cognitive thinking and reasoning and some sort of social element that you mentioned, working by themselves, for example, for me that's social, even though it's working maybe in small groups, but it's a social element to the learning process. So maybe you talk about cognitive thinking first and then social, or maybe you talk about social first and then you talk about the cognitive. You see what I mean? All right, teacher, got it. Mm -hmm. Similarly, my contribution will make, will also make. Yeah, same thing here. Um, and this is for everyone, guys. Just take a look at any examples where you're using the future tense and try changing it to the present tense and seeing how it sounds. If you say, my con you know, I contribute. Similarly, I contribute to making students more involved in various, right? Um, that, that that sounds a little bit different than I will also make the student be involved. Now, be careful with I will make the student do something. This sounds like oh, I'm going to make you do your homework, right? I'm going to force you to do your homework. It kind of sounds like that. When you make someone do something, I'm going to make them learn English. That means you're going to strangle them and may force them to, to learn uh, the language, right? And again, I know that's not what you mean, but that's kind of how it sounds when you use the, the verb make, make someone mm -hmm. be involved, right? So that in combination with the future tense, I would try to keep it in the present tense. Know that contribution also can be a verb. So I contribute, you could say that, or you can, you know, depending on, and then involve in various ideologies. Uh, you know, when to make the students be involved in various ideologies, I'm not sure I follow exactly what you mean ideologies are is a personal it's very an individual approach to to learning so i don't know if you're i'm not sure i would look at that again and take another look at that that will share with their peers all right I would try to state this a little bit more plainly, just like what it is that you want to say. What do you want them to share with their peers? And again, not that what they will do, right, but what they do, right? I mean, maybe regardless if you have uh, the, the experience or not, what speak in the present tense about things that this, because you, all of you have had teaching practicum, you've had some experience teaching in front of a group, 
in, in a teaching situation. So just express your philosophy as a teacher based on your current experiences, and uh, I would keep it pretty much in the present tense uh, throughout your educational philosophy. All righty? All right, teacher. Very okay. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Uh, was there anyone else that wanted me to look at anything? Yes, teacher, me, please. Okay, Damaris. All right, so in this first sentence, compare what you have here versus saying my educational philosophy helps English language learners reach their full potential. Right? For me, that sounds more direct and right to the point. Right? So, so think, about, think about the verbs that you're using. And in this case, using helps or, uh, you know, I think that I would uh, reword that slightly here. Okay, teacher. Helps them to reach. Um, Mm. All right, I understand what you want to say here. You want to focus more on the lexical approach versus uh, grammar. But in your philosophy, focus on things that you believe in that you do, not things that you don't do. So I think you can focus on the lexical approach, new vocabulary, and, and, and that type of thing without saying, without focusing on grammar. Um, because when you say you don't do something, um, you know, teaching is complex, and you, you know that. And you know that some students, right, even if your philosophy is, no, I'm going to focus on the lexical approach. I'm going to focus on new vocabulary. I'm going to ignore grammar. You're going to have one student in the very back. He or she is going to raise his, uh, her hand, and she's going to ask, I need a grammar explanation for this. And we're going to have to give a grammar explanation. We're not, we're not going to be able to just turn them down and say, well, my philosophy is this. Now, I'm not saying that you can't uh, express a lexical approach in your philosophy. But in the day-to-day, -day, when you say that you don't do something, you're really saying, okay, I'm ignoring it and I'm not going to ever look at it in, in my teaching practice. And if you just ignore it, if you just don't say it and say, look, I focus more on this. I don't ignore everything. I don't ignore anything, I should say. But I focus more on the lexical approach. I think that it's better to focus on lexical approach than the grammatical approach. That's great. Right. Keep that philosophy, but without saying, I ignore this, 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 and this. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, teacher. All right. Plus, with grammar, that's a difficult thing because we have overt grammar and covert. So, honestly, we're never really totally ignoring grammar. Even if we're not giving specific or explicit grammar instruction, where we are, in a way, still focusing on, on grammar. I mean, it's kind of hard to co totally ig ignore. And, I, and again, you're not saying that. I understand that. You're saying without focusing on grammar. But um, uh, So uh, I believe that the most important aspect when learning
All right. Try to, I'd like for you to reword this sentence and avoid, I believe. Because everything that you're saying here, uh, Demides, is what you believe. So it, it's understood. We know that this is what you believe. So try to avoid important. Show, don't tell. When you use the word important, you're telling. You're saying, hey, I'm telling you this is important. Don't tell us, show us. If you can do that, you're going to have a stronger educational philosophy because you're showing, you're demonstrating through your words what is important to you. And, and also, we're assuming everything you mention in this very short, brief educational philosophy is important. There's nothing maybe more important than anything else. It's all important. Okay, so that's another reason for trying to avoid the word important, trying to avoid the phrase, I believe. Even I consider, right? You, you Down below, you say, I consider that my role as a teacher. No, just say, my role as a teacher. There you go. That's it. You don't have to say, I consider this. I believe this. I think this. I consider that everyone can learn. No, everyone can learn English. Right. And for me, that sounds a lot better. You just you're right to it. Everyone can learn English without focusing on grammar or whatever. I use different techniques. And yeah. So. Let's see here. OK. And avoid, I believe, in this one sentence and. Reword what you mean by surrounded. Like, how would you do this? How would you surround students with as much language as possible? Think about how you would do that. And if you can express that in your educational philosophy, then the reader is going to have a bit more of an insight into who you are as a professional. When you say, I use different techniques, okay, how? How do you use those techniques? Why do you use those techniques? When do you use those techniques? I'm going to say expand, but this is what I mean. Think of the question words, expand. How do you use this? Why do you use these? Which techniques are you referring to? All right? Again, dig a little bit deeper. Maybe you don't want to talk about all the techniques, but choose one. Choose one of your favorite techniques. What is it? Why do you use it? How do you use it? To what end? I consider, and then my role as a teacher is a guide and facilitator. Yeah, I don't know for you what the difference is going to be between a guide and a facilitator. Uh, you know, we, you want, you want to show, you want to show, not tell. So if you're going to use the word facilitator, I don't think I would use both a guide and a facilitator. Um, I would say I facilitate. When you say that your role is one thing or two things, you're actually limiting yourself. And I know we all want to be a guide. We all want to be facilitators. We want to help and assist learners in the process. But, you know, sometimes assisting students means not being a facilitator. It means being a didactic leader. That is, you're out there teaching something that they don't know. And it happens. We are going, we're constantly moving back and forth between being a facilitator and helping as they are becoming more independent and interdependent. But, you know, there's sometimes they're very dependent on us. They don't know. And so they're asking questions and we are not a facilitator anymore. Now we are the didactic leader. We're the teacher. We're saying, okay, this is how it is, or they explain this, or we're giving them new information, and we're teaching in the traditional sense. A lot of people say, no, we got, you know, the traditional sense, uh, the traditional way of teaching, right, is, is bad. And of course, it is bad if that's primarily all you do. But the good teachers are constantly moving through being a leader, 
a didactic leader where they're teaching traditionally and then they're they're transitioning the student to be more independent and interdependent and the the teacher then knows and recognizes when he or she becomes less of a role because that's what we want right all of us want that we don't need to be we we're not needed right our goal is to be not needed right my goal is for you guys to write a paragraph and you don't need my feedback that you can do it all by yourself right so as we transition at the beginning maybe the teacher is more of a leader and didactic right and then we we transition we change and and so here i think i would if you want to use the word facilitator then i would use it as a verb not as a noun if you want to use guide use guide as a verb not a noun that way you're not limiting yourself to one or two specific roles for me a great teacher is one that is worried about students uh, i would choose a different verb is worried about worried about usually has kind of a negative connotation like i'm worried about the coronavirus i'm worried about my family right you're concerned and so i would choose a different verb instead of worried about my students i you know maybe there's a a different verb that you can use and i would avoid gender specific language like his her you can just say i'm worried about my students needs Okay, but again, I would choose a different verb. All right, do you have any questions, uh, Demaris? Have a good start here. No, teacher, I think that everything is clear. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, guys, uh, we're just about over here for today. Um, Tomorrow we're going to have one more day to complete the task. And if you haven't done so already, the expectation is that everyone, all of us, are uploading our educational philosophy to this shared Word online document, all of us, right? So that I can give you some feedback. And also, all of us need to include our link in the Excel spreadsheet. So if you haven't done so already, please include by tomorrow the ePortfolio, the link to your ePortfolio. So everyone, all of us by tomorrow, before tomorrow's class, needs to have the link here so that I can also take a quick look at your ePortfolios. I'd like to do that tomorrow. I want to look at all the ePortfolios that I have not had a chance yet to look at tomorrow in the live session and look at anyone else that has uh, that has not received feedback to your educational philosophy part of the grade for the educational philosophy is receiving feedback from me that's part of the process okay so um that's a big part of the process <laughs> okay so please upload to the word online document your educational philosophy and the e to the e portfolio or the uh, spreadsheet here please make sure that you've included the link to your e portfolio all right guys we'll stop there for today uh, enjoy the rest of your day guys and we'll talk to you tomorrow take care teacher can i ask something really quickly yes demandis go ahead i can create a uh, uh uh, it's not a profile, but I can I can create something in Google Drive as my my ePortfolio. Uh, you can use Google Sites. Oh, Google Sites. Okay. Yeah, you can use Google Sites. I would like for it to be a public platform. Okay, so some place that you can publish your work online okay so google sites you could use wix you could use weebly i think we talked about pd works i think those are the four platforms that that have been around for a long time and that's uh, something that you need to take into consideration try to choose a platform that's public and that's been around a while so that you know that it's not going to disappear tomorrow and um those are the four that come to mind, but you can use a different platform, but it needs to be public. It needs to be something that you publish and show. And 
you know, I encourage you guys to look at some of your classmates. We looked at some really good examples yesterday of some e-portfolios, and you can get some ideas about what it looks like. And these platforms are really good because they already have themes baked in, right? All you need to do is basically add the content and maybe take away some of the content that is included in the, the templates, and then you have your, your design. You don't have to be a designer or a computer expert. You just basically need to copy and paste content that you've already created and, and move it into different pages. So this is what we can look at as well if you have questions about or some technical issues. But you know now's the time. Today's Thursday, and this is due tomorrow. So choose a platform that is public in nature that the whole world can see essentially so that uh, so it just makes it easier to upload the content. OK, teacher, thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, bye. Uh, see you guys. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Thank you.